All right, so we're going to start section 4.4 and 4.5, and we're going to piece these together uh, because they really do the same thing. We're going to prove that triangles are congruent. Now, remember, two congruent triangles, um, what was special about them was that when I drew one, every piece of it was exactly the same. And what we were able to do was mark this side congruent to this side, this one congruent to this one, and so on. And so every piece of this triangle, including the angles, let's change the color. This angle was congruent to this one, top angle congruent to top angle. Um, all of the angles and all of the sides of congruent triangles are congruent. But to prove that triangles are congruent, we wanted to go through and find a way to do it. And that's what these four acronyms do. Uh, SSS, SAS, ASA, and AAS are four different ways to prove triangles congruent. We're going to go through and learn how those work, uh, and then in the next video we'll start doing proofs relating to that. So the first one, SSS, side, side, side. Uh, S obviously stands for side. A is going to stand for angle. If we know that three pairs of sides, one pair, two pairs, and three pairs, are congruent, the triangles are congruent. Uh, next one, side angle side. What we need are two pairs of sides, side one and side two, and what's special about this is we need the angle in between the two sides to be the one that's congruent. And take a look at where the A is. A is in between of the two sides, just like it is on the picture. So when we say side angle side, we're talking about side with an angle in between that and the other side. The fourth, third one is angle side angle. Same idea, we need two angles and we need a side in the middle. So we have an angle and an angle. We have a second angle, angle R congruent to angle C. And in between those two, we have a congruent side. And then remember uh, these congruent statements, they go according to what's congruent. So angle R is first, which means C has to go first, because G is second, T should go second, and then W and H are last. And then we have angle, angle side, and two angles, but it's one of the sides that is not in between the two angles. So here's angle and angle, here's angle and angle, and Angle angle side will work here as long as KL and AB are not used. You could use either of the other pairs. You could use JK and AC, or you could use JL and CB. So angle angle side, remember, it goes in that order. Two angles with a side not in between them. If you go through an order and you write it as SAA, it really is the same thing because remember you can go left to right or right to left. So let's look at this and see which property we're using. In this first picture in the top left corner we have one pair of angles and we have one pair of sides. Now just based off of that given information we would use none of these but I know that all vertical angles are always congruent. So we have an angle and an angle with the side in between so angle side angle. Over here on the right, we have two sides. We have an angle. We have two sides and an angle in between. That's side, angle, side. Now looking down here, we have a side and a side. We have an, a side and a side. And this middle side, what's special about the middle is that both triangles are using BC. Since they both use it, remember that property reflexive? We're going to use reflexive property to say that, that side is congruent to itself. So this one actually is side, side, side. Uh, let's do the same thing. Uh, just so we have them up here, we had side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Looking over here, we have an angle and an angle and a side in between. But it has to match here, angle or side, a side, but we don't have the angle in between. So this is none because this angle here, circled, would have to be the one that's congruent. Because it's not, we're actually looking at two different triangles. 
Uh, looking down here, we have an angle and an angle. We have another angle and another angle. So I've already used two angles, which tells me it's one of these last two. Now, the side that I know is congruent is my reflexive side. So the question you have to ask yourself, is that side in between the two angles, or is it not in between? It actually isn't in between, because ST is the line in between. So this one is angle, angle, side. When you look over here on the right, you have two right angles, you have two congruent angles, and you have vertical angles congruent. Now, based on what I know, that's angle, angle, angle. The only problem is, angle, angle, angle is not, a simil is not a congruent statement. As we get into later chapters, it's going to be a similarity statement, but for right now, we don't want to use that, so we're going with none again. Let's try again which property. We have two sides with an angle in between. Side, angle, side. Take a minute, try the other ones, see if you get them right. We have a reflexive side in the middle, so that's side, side, side. Over here on number three, we have vertical angles, so we have angle, side, angle. And the hardest part about number four is knowing which triangles we're actually looking at. The triangles we're looking at are these two overlapping ones, the one in red and the one in blue. Now, in red and blue, this angle on the top is congruent. These sides are congruent, and these angles are congruent. So it follows angle, side, angle. One of the hardest parts is if you have triangles overlapping, trace them so that way you're able to see which triangle you're using. Try these ones and then we'll continue. Number five is going to be none because the two sides has to have an angle in between. Since these angles up here are not congruent, you can't use side angle side or angle side side. That's not one either. Over here we know we have a reflexive side since we have angle or side, angle side, SAS. Over here, M is a midpoint of AB. Being a midpoint tells me I make two congruent statement or two congruent segments. Same over here. M is the midpoint of C D. And we have vertical angles. So we have side angle side. Over here on the right, number eight, B C is congruent to C D. I know this is congruent to itself, and because one's congruent to two, I know that angle ABC is congruent to angle ADC. Problem is, this is side side angle. We don't know anything about these two middle angles, so this one is actually none. Looking over here on number nine, we have an angle congruent to an angle. We have a side congruent to a side, reflexive in the middle, angle, side, angle. Over here, a side congruent to a side, another side congruent to another side, with an angle in the middle makes it side, angle, side. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to give you two of the things. You need to figure out what else is needed to get to it. So if GH is congruent to KO, and angle G is congruent to angle O, what would I need for side, angle, side? What would I need for angle, side, angle? And what would I need for angle, angle, side? So looking at it, side, angle, side means I have side followed by an angle and then a side accompanying it. And I'm going to color code this so we can draw on the same picture. So GJ would have to be congruent to OM. If GJ is congruent to OM, then that's congruent by side, angle, side. For angle, side, angle, we're going the other way. We're starting at the angle, going to the side, followed by another angle. So we would need angle H to be congruent to angle, oops, angle K. Angle H congruent to angle K. For angle, angle, side, we're starting at the red angle, and we have a side over here, which means we want to go the other way. 
if angle J is congruent to angle M, we have an angle, an angle, and a side. We're using purple and red for angle, angle, side. So I need angle J to be congruent to angle M. So if we want to go by side, 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 I need all three sides. I need those two missing sides to be congruent. So BD has to be congruent to JL. For me to use the property side, 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 this is getting me prepped for using proofs, I would need to say BD is congruent to JL. Trying the same thing here, I know this is reflexive. So angle, angle side, I need to pick the angle that's not angle K, otherwise that'd be in the middle. So I need angle S congruent to angle J. If angle S is congruent to angle J, then these triangles would be congruent by angle, angle side. For side, angle side, vertical angles are congruent. I have a side, I have an angle, I need the corresponding side. So AR, if AR is congruent to PR, these triangles will be congruent by side, angle, side. For angle, side, angle, you need an angle on either side of the side that's congruent. Since this is the one that's congruent, I need angle F. Since this is the side that's congruent, I need angle B. So if angle F is congruent to angle B, these triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. Now, don't panic. This isn't the last time we're doing these four properties. We're going to be spending at least a full week working on these proofs and these four properties.